All right. Um, everyone's favorite, Orbiter 1. Um, I think the first time I played this was... Uh, maybe, was it Pinburg? It was definitely a show. It was either Pinburg, Expo, or MGC. And I want to say, I feel like it was Pinburg, but it wasn't in the tournament. It was actually part of like the replay effect show. So that was my very first time playing this. And I remember, we can't have that. Oh. <laughs> well, it'll be over in a second. <laughs> um, I remember seeing the ball interact with the pop bumpers and not really understanding how that worked. Like, I'm like, is there a magnet pulsing the ball away? Um, like, what's making the ball act in such a weird way? with these pop bumpers and then Dave got his and that's when I found out that they're it's actually just a spinning rubbery foam material that's spinning that's repelling the ball off of it so I thought that was pretty cool actually so uh, do you want to go into a little bit of background of how you got the game sure yeah before we kick off yeah it's kind of a uh... Weird little story, I guess, where I just saw it mentioned on one of the Pinside forums. Somebody said they had one, and they were thinking about selling it or something, so I messaged them. And they didn't they didn't really have much information. They just had... Um, he's kind of a newer pinball guy, and he had a handful of games that were, I think, his parents or grandparents or something like that. Anyway... They had died years ago, and they took everything of value from the house, and they just shoved it all in a storage unit, and it sat for years. And so that's why he didn't have any pictures. So I, I met, so sight on scene, I met this guy at a storage unit in Chicago. He, he was from, oh, I don't know, further, further west. I was like probably a few hours west. Yeah, Novad, you are exactly right. It is indeed a trip. And so I I met him at this storage unit, not you know, not really knowing anything. It like it could have been drug behind a truck, right, for all I know. And so I go and check it out and you know, it's in the heads detached and so the the price was right on it, so I, I picked it up because it didn't, I couldn't even get into it either, like the, he didn't have any keys or anything, so I just kind of rolled the dice on it, and looked at um, just the cosmetic shape of it. And anyway, um, turns out that it, it's probably one of the nicer um, orbiters out there, uh, according to Neo, they're all, they're usually fairly nice because, um, well, I don't know. I don't think a lot of them got into into locations. Um, it probably wasn't a super... I guess people didn't really get the game. Um, and it didn't help that... So originally this was a timed ball game. So you had like... It kept kicking out balls. It kept kicking out balls and it'd be kind of confusing it's kind of like if you're familiar with Gottlieb's going nuts or um i think there's a uh, what is it Gottlieb um uh, 007 i think is like that and maybe like beat time or beat the clock i don't know but anyway it, it was just weird and then to top it off with the weird play field so if you haven't seen this game before at all it's probably the weirdest pinball machine ever made and will ever be made because it really is the neatest feat of engineering where you have a thermal formed 
space, moon, whatever it is, um, sort of landscape. And then you have another thermal formed plexi in sort of this weird bathtub type shape um, over top of it. So it gives you this really disorienting look. Hey, Marlon, how's it going? And then, like Ryan said, you got these, they're not pop bumpers, they're spinning bumpers, and they're made of like a foam material similar to what your shoes shoes would be made out of. And you'll see as we play that it deflects off. Um, but anyway, the rules are fairly simple to this game. Um, basically, multi-ball is there's a pocket up in the top left that I think there's a ball currently locked in it now um, so you can get two ball multi ball in this game and in order to activate it you got to hit down all the orbiter targets so there's um, yeah you can see them there's uh, blue drop targets so you got to hit all those down and then um, I believe to get special you got to hit all the stand up orbiter targets behind that um what else multipliers are your three bank drop targets on the main play field um i thought this was kind of cool for the to collect the special or the extra ball you have to go through the spinner and hit a stand-up target on the orbiter oh, thing which is not an That's easy like putting Yes, <laughs> it really is. It's yes, it's very similar to putt putt golf because the terrain is all weird. This game's more like mini golf than a pinball machine. Yes, yeah, and so um, yes, it goes behind the flippers, and there is a lot of skill to it. Um, oh, and then you'll you can spot drop targets by these sort of return lanes that go on the outside. Um, yeah, the game's very trippy else. because the ball can go behind the flippers, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's out of play. Right. It's very um, hard to get used to, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, you, you get, I don't know, I've gotten a little bit better at it, but it it's pretty simplistic in the rules. Um, you'll, you'll get it as we go. Um, one thing to note is I did unplug, the, so the... The spinners do spin, but they're not currently scoring because they're they're an opto spinner, and the way they work is there's a spinning disc on the underside that spins between an opto, and it's got little hash marks on it, and the way that it knows that there's a hit is the um, the speed. It's measuring the speed of the bumper and when it slows down that's when it scores a point well um it, there's something going on where the the points are like overactive so like when you when you hit the flippers it'll constantly rack up thousand points um so i need to figure that out but that's pretty much it so <laughs> New uh, event. I'll, I'll go take care of it. It's Dracula. Go back there and kick it. <laughs> and also, uh, we want to thank you for coming because we know we're not streaming the new Shiny. Um, and that is much more flashy and probably more fun to play than this, one would argue. Um, but this game is different and unique and we wanted to get it handled and under our belt. Hey, that's so. that's our that's our thing, though. Do the weird and different, you know? Yeah. We're the, the alternative... You so, can, anybody can go and watch the uh, new shiny any night. You don't but, get to see Orbiter. No, uh, <laughs> so. no, not at all. So we we are very grateful for everyone who takes the time to come and watch. In general, let alone uh, when it is Orbiter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, if you haven't played it before, the like the shooter rod is like further down by the leg so there's a whole trough that kind of goes up the, the play field for this is enormous and probably one of the heaviest pinball machines ever made um, but anyway so it has this 
flashy light to let you know that there's a ball there. And what you want to do is kind of a, there's already a ball locked in the left, but you want to try to do like a half plunge to arc it around to get that ball locked. But anyway, too light. There's a spinner shot. Boom. So it's kind of the spinner shots like on the just the end of the left flipper. And you can cradle the ball, believe it or not. It's kind of neat. So they have uh, some of the same um, dynamics as, as a normal pinball. It's just a little bit weird. Burp, to get burp, 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 burp. <laughs> Nah, I should have left the flipper up. All right. <laughs> Pinsomniac, you are correct. This the, the game takes a few plays to get a feel for it because it's got the bathtub-shaped play field. So the ball movement is not predictable right away. And the ball being able to go behind the flippers and still be in play is very weird yeah I remember the first time I played this game it was at a place called Blaine Brook in Minnesota and it was at it's the bowling at, alley? Yep. Really? and it's a place where they got like 50 games there 50 games. and you know it's the it's very similar to... Nah, I knocked it in. Similar to my basement here where they had, like, black light carpet and black, you know. So, we have this kind of lit up, but when you... Well, it's it looks fairly similar to what you're seeing on the stream where it's kind of a darker game. And it looks really trippy because um, you're, like, looking into it. It's very disoriented. Yeah, Pinsomniac, the play field, if you want to call it that... It's like a bathtub shape, so it's like an elongated bowl. So it's actually a, a clear plexi or acrylic uh, or urethane. Maybe it's urethane. No, it's uh, I think it's like a plexi. And then what you're seeing is underneath it, and it actually is 3D vacuum formed with a no! plastic. Clear, like a clear plant, it's, it's more like a bathtub. I mean, it's it's sloped on every edge inward. <laughs> CNK, well, if, if you call this, I mean, I would co consider this more of a novelty game. I mean, well, uh, once you once you get going on it, like I was just watching a video and. There's people that can really, that can, there's some skill ah. for sure. But yeah, for that reason, you probably um, never see it in a tournament. No, Pinsomniac, I would say it's probably four inches deep from the highest point to the, to the lowest point. Don't you think? Yeah. It's not six, but it's, it's very... Uh, Strange. I mean, that's why the ball's so erratic and acts funny. I mean, I I'll say I do enjoy playing it, um, because it is so weird and unique. But you know, you're not going to see this in a tournament. And I do believe did you mention this is last Stern's last production game. Oh, not yet. No. Well, I just spilled the beans. It's all right. Was that gonna be the? Yeah, it is the last one. So, 
I mean, if you kind of follow... <laughs> CK asked if he looped it up with some pledge. No. Um, if you kind of follow some of the stuff that Stern Electronics was trying then, it's it really was like, hey, we're going out of business. Like, go... What's, like, the craziest thing that you can come up with? Like, here's your chance. Um, you know, they kind of said that with, um, you know, some some valley things, too, and when pinball was kind of on the downward spiral in the 80s. So, like, Gottlieb did some of that stuff, too, where they, you know... No, I knocked it in. Try something different. I mean, like, they're... At this point... The arcades were just taking over. Everybody's investing in that. Um, and, you know... You just... You weren't hey, seeing the Jeremy, numbers. How's it going, man? Nice to see you. So, the... Production numbers on this are, are really low. I will admit that I appreciate the attempt at something different. Um, I think for what it is, they did a good job. It's just... You know, I, I think it's one of those things where on paper it sounded great, and then after they did it, it's not as not as great as it could have been. Like, I feel like the perfect example for that, in my opinion, the way I feel, uh, Champion Pulp. Like, in theory, it sounds like it would be amazing. Like, on paper, it's like, oh, this should be great. But then, like, I play it, and I play it, and I play it, and I'm like, ah, I just can't get into it. But, like, everything they did, they did a great job. Like, you have a, an actual boxer that spins around. You have the jump rope deal, the speed bag deal. Like, I love all that. It's just... I don't know. Jeremy, don't you have a champion pub? If I remember right? Yeah, it's not for everybody. Yeah, and it, I know it's if you read anything that says and don't forget the racist tropes. <laughs> he said going good, and I'm offended by your champion pub comments. <laughs> hmm. Some people really like the game. Hey, there's plenty of games I like, people hate, and plenty of games. I hate people. Alone. Yeah, like Deadpool. You yeah, lost like Deadpool. everybody in the last stream. Yeah, I, ironically, <laughs> ironically, I was expecting I'm hate mail. You. I got zero hate mail for uh, my my rant, and I actually got people saying that was that was a good stream. Arcade, Arbor Orbiter 2 was a, 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 an upgrade from Orbiter 1, you're right. Orbiter 2. <laughs> well, there was, was it uh, Super Orbit? Was it? Dude, you rock it. Thank you so much for the three-month subscription. We greatly appreciate it. I think that. it was, uh, was it Gottlieb? They made a Super <laughs> Orbit or something like that. Yeah, new event, that would be perfect. Then you could bash me over and over again and watch me jiggle. Oh no! Oh! Dang it! Oh wait, I didn't hit anything! Oh, you didn't, didn't, qual anything. You didn't qualify the bathtub! <laughs> Well, maybe it's a good thing that I took out the spitting bumper scoring. 
Yeah, the ball does that crazy swirl deal into the drain. Yeah, it's like the that penny thing at the store for the charity. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Dude, you rock it if you have never played this game before. Oh. The play field, quote unquote, is not flat. It is like a bathtub. So the edges curve up, and it, it kind of goes down into a. It's not. It's not even flat. It's. It's the ball moves because it's just essentially a gigantic bowl. That's why the ball can go behind the flippers and come back. Uh, and this was the very last game that Stern Electronics made, which we stated earlier. Um, would definitely consider this more of a novelty game than real pinball, of course. When you put that, the different rounds in there. Whoa. So with with the timed ball. No. The way that they initially came out with it, with the timed ball. Hey, Leaf Salmon, how's it going? Good to see you. What's his toes? How's it going? Yeah, I mean, this is not a game that you're... I'll, I'll say this. I, I enjoy it because it is so weird and off the wall. But I'm not going to go out of my way to get one. That's what I have Dave for. Right. Yeah, it's definitely different feeling and hard to get used to. It's kind of like the moment the ball goes behind the flippers, you want to make sure the flippers are up so the ball can roll back into play and not be shoved into the drain. We have yet to get multi-ball. Uh, I got one target left to get on. Ah. Oh. Yeah, our friend Neo has this one too, so. Speaking of which, he just texted me. Oh, did he? Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Well, I just won. No. No. <laughs> What's his toes? That's exactly right. He says if he didn't have a collection. If he had a collection like yours, he would get it. Otherwise, no. That's what a lot of people have said. It, it's cool. So I look at this similar to maybe my uh, puck bowler, where it's it's a fun kind of party game, you know, where drinking a few beers and <laughs> you know trying to. Trying to navigate the bathtub uh, play field. Aww. Ryan I I stole my multi ball. See? I wish I could have did that. What's going on, Nap Arcade? Good to see you. Uh, Nuovad brings up a very good question. He says that it needs more naked women and the CPR have a conversion kit for this. <laughs> right. Is that what they're doing now? They're coming out with a bunch of naked... Uh, 
play field. Jeremy asks, what is the make and model of your puck bowler? It is a Williams System 11 um, gold mine. So eventually, ah, I get it to myself. Eventually, we're gonna we're gonna stream that too. It's um, it's just to the right of us. It's really neat if you if you have any one of the the System 11 uh, puck bowlers, they're they're pretty much all the same. Like you could change the theme if you wanted to. So they made like Top Dog and Alley Cats. Gold mine, shuffle in. Um, Didn't they only make one DMD one? Yeah, but that's so that that's but it's not System Eleven. No, no, that was um, that was like the very last one that they yeah. did. But it's kind of neat that you can you can change the theme if you wanted to with get different sounds and stuff. But um, so yeah, eventually we'll we'll stream that. It'll be awesome. Jeremy says Alley Cats has the breaking bottle songs. Ah. Yeah, so I, I have a kind of a neat story for the uh, the puck bowler. It was so I, I moved from a, a pretty small town in, in Minnesota and this bowler was actually in the bowling alley for many years, and a lot of the people that, uh, that live there, like, there's a lot of history with it. And when the when the pinball or the bowling alley closed down, um, the operator like sold off the stuff locally, and it ended up in this person I work with, uh, their husband bought it, uh, bought, I think they bought that, they bought a genie pinball and a Mrs. Pac-Man, and they just sat in this garage for years, and so I bought this thing not knowing much about it other than that it had pinball parts in it, and I, it takes forever to restore a bowling oh, machine <laughs> so I went through and I painted like the whole cabinet and everything fixed up all the boards pins everything and um, my advice is get one that's already done if you ever get a bowler a ton of work uh, and they're get asked how are our families everyone healthy yes yep as far as our personal families go we are both very fortunate that everyone is happy and healthy. Yep. And we hope that all of you can say the same. Lindsay started her new job. Oh, nice sweep. Lindsay started her new job. Um, this is her second week. So. Also, um, let us know how the audio is if you oh. adjust anything. Forgot to bring that up earlier. Dude, your rocket says congratulations to Lindsay. Oh, thank you, thank you. And also, six thousand dollars later, you have a restored puck bowler. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't so bad. Uh, after you chase the mice out, <laughs> it all kick them out. out. Right, you're getting evicted. And the nice thing is, Pin, uh, Pinball Resource has pretty much all the parts you need to, um, to restore them. Oh, really? Yeah, like all the, the pins and the little armature and stuff like that. I do like how the ball, like, flies back yeah. to sweep. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So it reminds me, Neo just got this game that it has a ramp kind of like that where it's it's like huge and it arcs around what is it called like something space it was one of those um, newer Zach games you know what I'm talking about are you talking about the X-Force or are you yeah, talking X -Force. about Space Team 
Uh, maybe it was maybe it was space team. Space team. Yeah, it's got like a weird ramp that arcs around like that. Yeah. Uh. Top. Ah. Yes, I feel good now. <laughs> I'm getting a better feel for the physics. Now I'm, hit, I'm hitting the flipper from behind. I don't mean the spinner. Yeah, it's pretty cool when you arc it around and it, and it sweep the, the three banks in. Well, I don't mean to bray, but I think I've become the Orbiter 1 master of not draining. <laughs> no! Ow! No! You gotta talk about it. Boy. Then you drain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Noah Bad asks how your pinball tables are and are they healthy? Mine are. <laughs> well, except for one. 1950 Shuffle Alley Express. Tiny five inch pins. Oh nice. So it's it must be like really short then. Interesting. Right? I have been looking for a long time and I was close to buying a ball bowler, like three inch balls. Um because if you go like the four inch ones, like the big ball bowlers, they're freaking huge, like twenty some feet long. Neil's got one. Yeah, so I looked at one like he's got. He's he's also in the, I want to say, 20-foot range. But, you know, you, it's a lot of real estate, so you really have to have, like, a dedicated wall that doesn't have... So his works fine for that space because you can't really have a whole lot of... It's like in a skinny, long part of his basement, so, you know, it's kind of a perfect spot for it. Where I don't really have oh there we go lock the ball. Um, I really don't have the space, so that's where the shuffle pucks were probably popular because they're the same width as a pinball machine, but they're maybe like a couple feet longer, or maybe more than a couple. Um, but I I gotta imagine they must have been popular in bars at. At some point, you know. I mean, they're such a good party game. I'm really surprised that there isn't more. Like, I've seen shuffle, like regular shuffle boards in bars before, mm -hmm. but I've I've never seen a a ball bowler. Like, why? Why isn't there? Well, Bruce or, had uh, one at uh, the Silver Ball Saloon. Oh, did he? Yeah. Come on. Hey, Mixer Tuna, how are you doing? Mixer Tuna? I don't mean to uh, point out that I'm wearing your shirt, Tuna, but I'm wearing your shirt. <laughs> Yeah, C and K, the, um, about six, yeah, six or seven feet for the shuffle pucks. Yeah. Come I on. like them. It's, it's cool because they got, like, the more modern sound. There's, there's more games to play than a lot of your ball bowlers anyway, so. In a smaller package. Jeez. Yeah, dude, you rock out. Ah! I wonder, maybe that's why they they got they don't like them at bars because people <laughs> can take the ball and throw them at each other. I could, yeah, maybe. <laughs> people be crazy. Well, you know what about like the basketball? Remember, like uh, all the yeah you know, basketball games and stuff. Like I don't know. I guess some kids would 
Oh, yeah, knew about other. These were uh, a limited run many years ago. I had to get one. <laughs> Gotta support the hogs. Have you have you ever pet a hedgehog before? I have. I think I have once when I was a kid. Very prickly. I'll show off the back as well. All right, our, our t-shirts aren't that cool. Not not double-sided print. No, our t-shirts are not. I could get double-sided, but we didn't have a have a graphic or anything. Uh, Tuna Dave got this in a back alley, alley literally. <laughs> Literally a back alley deal. And yep. He didn't get raped. He didn't get shot. He didn't get stabbed. We, I think he we talked get... about that when I was driving there. It's like just make yeah. sure you don't get stabbed. Yeah, I think I did say that. <laughs> it's like, it's like you're doing what? It's like I'm going to a storage unit to meet this guy. <laughs> just not. It was like it's not the first time I've met somebody at a storage unit to buy a game. So. I've I've done it all kinds, all kinds of deals. You, I'm sure you've been to places before. Like, ah, here's the money. Let me get out of here. <laughs> yeah, tuna. It's in amazing condition. Apparently, well, you can retell the story. Okay. I'm not gonna tell the background of the games you get where you don't get murdered. <laughs> No, I, I just saw it. Uh, it's one of those where like a, a newer pin side guy came on, you know. Super questionable, of course. Right, questionable guy. Well, like, you know, they create an account and they like just to go on and sell something or whatever. So, Similar to the guy that we're talking to today. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, so, oh, look at that. See, Lead Sandman, that's a good point. Don't get stabbed is a wonderful standard checklist item. That'd be great on a shirt. <laughs> oh. For buying pinball machines, number one, don't get stabbed. Oh, number two, <laughs> we need a checklist. Huh. Yeah. It's number two. <laughs> don't uh, let them know how much money you have on you. <clears throat> right. No, that's another good one. <laughs> don't take the cash in with you. And, you know, like... There's nothing wrong with uh, going and checking it out first. Like I, so the 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 last game I went and looked at that um, uh, wild card. I I took the I had the Escalera in there and everything. Like I was ready to get the oh, thing. Oh, you showed up already. Yeah, yeah. I took it in there. So you were just primed to get robbed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it in there and and as soon as. As soon as I got a closer look at it, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to take this. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like, I, I don't even want, I, I said, I feel bad, you know, wasting your time here, but. But you really you've wasted mine. <laughs> <laughs> you are a liar. <laughs> well, in, in his defense, it did, it did play, but he. It was faded because it was in a fire. <laughs> it's like this. So you're saying it was a really good the, deal. The graphics melted off. They didn't <laughs> fade off. <laughs> oh, it's pretty faded. It's got a smoked aroma about it. <laughs> it's got a like fine, smoke. fine patina. It smells like ah! s'mores. Yeah. So we anyway. had to in an actual fire sale, literally. Yeah. Yeah, the, you could obviously see like there was plastics melted, which are unobtainium. That's another thing too. If you're getting rare games and there's stuff with art on it that you know that you can't find, uh, you might want to think twice about it because you're, um, it it's going to be next to impossible. Um, anyway, back to the orbiter story. So, met this. Uh, or saw a post for he didn't even make an ad he just mentioned it on a thread oh, saying the Chicago group uh, yeah I think so and he just said that he had it and that was it so I messaged him and 
um, Dave, hit. Uh, the piranha that he is. Right. He. Dave smelled blood. <laughs> yeah. He um, he didn't have any pictures. Um, he couldn't tell me anything really about the condition. He just remembered that it worked at one time, and he kind of gave me a price and. Um, so after I was talking, he said, well, it can, we can meet in Chicago at the storage place or whatever. And I was like, all right, well, give me the address yeah, and time. No, and You're that. right. The Chicago group is, it's a bunch of vultures. <laughs> yeah. It's not just Chicago. It's like everyone in Wisconsin, everyone in Northern Illinois, probably people from Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're in Iowa. Like, it's kind of a. Yeah. Well, there's a lot it's, of it's, there's a lot of stuff that gets pulled. Today. Yeah. But so yeah, I met. Uh, well, he's. Uh, he actually, also, lead Sandman. Sorry to hear about all your problems. That is a mega bummer. Said that three fuses and pirates and his audio mix are burned up tonight. Uh, that is awful. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Uh, so anyway, he was... Or continue playing. He was starting to shy away, like, Oh, no, I want to go I want to go get it, get it from the storage unit. Take it home, plug it in, see what works. Like, no, 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 no. Because as soon as you do that, the price is going to go up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, it's like, I'll, I'll take it, you know, as is. And, uh... So luckily, he still went through with the deal, and I ended up with a, a nice orbiter out of it. So I mean, the cabinet's amazing. I mean, yeah, I I, I wouldn't doubt that it went straight to a home. Um, what the hell? You're destroying me. I got two, two multi balls. Lucky. I did have an insta drain in my last ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's another tip. So we're talking about. Not tip. getting stabbed? So, yeah. Uh, rule one when going to buy a game from a shady source don't get stabbed. <laughs> Rule two, don't take the cash in with you when you're going to check out the game. You can always go back out to the truck and get your cart and the cash to make a deal. Um, what were you talking about? Not dying. No, I know. There was another one. Oh, Yulved said, uh, that's the third one. Do not fix the game while you're there. If you know if you know what it is as you're looking it over, don't try and fix it because if you do, the price goes up. Don't fix it. Or they change their mind. Yeah, just look it over, you know, make sure that uh, everything's there, you know, point out things that they might not have noticed or whatever you want to do, but don't fix it. Do that when you get home. <laughs> I don't know, what else is a good good uh, rule of thumb for <laughs> buying games? <laughs> Nap Arcade says, always strike first with your shank and figure it out later. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Stab first, ask like, questions later. Is that like a Cobra Kai? Cobra Kai! <laughs> strike first, strike hard! <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, Tuna you're right so it's a fine line pointing out flaws in someone's game to try to haggle well yeah you don't want to be like um, <laughs> eat Sandman don't show excitement <laughs> yeah that's a dead giveaway too well I did that with Dracula <laughs> I, just, I held everything back it's like this <laughs> no this is complete garbage game <laughs> 
No, I didn't say that. New event says I call my wife when I arrive and I leave. <laughs> I turn on my cell phone tracking as well. Just in case I end up in a van down by the river. <laughs> That's another good one. Oh. Uh, yeah, if it's better than you expected, um, you know. It's it's negotiate so especially if the price is still negotiable, um, you know. If you if you kinda already have it figured out, like you're gonna be able to to tell so there's always the first negotiation when you're talking to them. Everybody always does that first, and then when they get there they'll try to do a second negotiation. You'll be able to find out pretty quick if they're willing to tolerate that or not. So and then there's also a distance factor too. Like someone's not gonna drive, you know, 12 hours and not go home empty-handed. So, yeah, that is for sure. You know, if they're if they're coming from like freaking. Pennsylvania to Wisconsin, um, they're going to be paying. What they're not going to have. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're they're taking it. Right. No, oh, I thought I could save it. Tuna says, if you want to haggle, you better do it before you leave if it's a long drive. Yeah. You know, at least get get to a price that you're comfortable paying. And so I've, I've done this before. Um, and it was it was the last one where, where I got to a price I was comfortable with. I get there and the it's... The, the wild card. Oh, was the recent one. Yeah, the recent one. So... I go there and I was fine with it like if it was in the condition that he was talking about and it was way below that and there wasn't really any price that I wouldn't say that he had to he would have to pay me to take it but it, it'd be a lot of work to take to bring that thing back to life and or to respectable condition and I you know you've said it before Ryan where you know, looking at, you have to look at it as if I was to, if this game was mine, if I owned it, would I be able to get what they're asking for it? If the answer is no, then you don't do the deal. Then you don't do it. I mean, it, but if you, if it's something that you really, really want, and you don't care, then you know. Yeah, there's, there's a game currently trying to be dealt with that I started it and I walked away from it so then <laughs> Dave, Dave picked up the baton in this relay race and he's trying to get it now <laughs> and we're not going to say what it is because it might fall apart but fall apart. The, the guy is trying to sell a game that's not uh, seen often for like what better, better way of putting it and I kind of contact the guy because I'm like I wouldn't mind that, but his asking price is like for a game that's like in amazing condition, and this game is not in amazing condition. And um, it's <laughs> way, way below to the point where, in fact, it's not even working. And he wants to sell it as if it's a spectacular functioning game. And he, you know, it's the price or best offer, of course. He's just fishing. And. Uh, new event, it's not Sexy Girl. Although I did see Sexy Girl. When did I go to Neo? Saturday? Uh, yeah. I did just see Sexy Girl, but it's not that. And it's not Crawl Tuna. It's not Crawl. Um, it's but a pretty cool game. It's, I mean, I, I would have one if it wasn't 20 some thousand dollars. Yeah. Anyway. I'd like to get some more time on it. But. So in, in the game, this game I'm talking about, it's not close. It's many, many, many hours away. Um, 
that makes it harder too. Yeah. You know, when you've got to travel that far, you. And essentially, I just, after talking to him, and with all the work that it needs, and the amount of money it's going to take to get it to what I would feel like, like it, the value it is. Oh, I know what you, like, oh. Dave will get it, and then as soon as he fixes it up, I'll buy it from you. I know what your con is. That's exactly what you did. So I planted the seed in Dave's head, and I was like, oh, I got this deal half worked out, uh, like, but I don't want it anymore. Should I just give him your phone number and pretend that you're me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Has that ever happened before? No. I'm glad we caught it on stream. Well. Yeah. That's all right. We'll just slide it down real quick. Oh boy. Oh well. Well, and we already talked about the distance thing. It goes both for buyers and sellers, you know. It's it's Yeah, Tuna I was too, I was quite scared. He says, waiting for the glass to shatter. <laughs> Tempered glass! Does Nia have all the CPAR conversion kits ordered to go with his dirty games? <laughs> oh. I don't see. See, Neo's. Um, he doesn't do a whole lot of work for. or things for himself. It well, seems. yeah, well, he is way too busy with other people's stuff. Moto Arcade, thank you so much for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Um, Neo, Neo's gig is the rare import stuff. Mm -hmm. Not that he doesn't like the his normal stuff too. Yeah, I mean he's got Lord of the Rings, he's got Atlantis, he's got ACDC, Ghost, he's got Iron Maiden, he's got Ghostbusters. Um. Is there more another stern? But yeah, he's he's much like me. He likes the weird and different. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Emoto, it's not a game you see streamed very often, or I guess often in general. Have you ever seen it streamed? This one? Maybe I don't know. But me, I will say that I really enjoy going to Neo's because he's just got so much stuff you don't see. And he's a knowledgeable guy about a lot of history and yeah, he is a wealth of knowledge, that's for sure. Yeah, the ball uh, takes some getting used to the way it moves on the like. If the ball goes behind the flipper, you better lift the flippers up to let it roll through to try to grab it on the other flipper. Uh, Nap Arcade says, do you ever get a feel for the grooves on Orbiter, or is it just always just reflexes? Um, I mean, after a few games, you kind of get a feel for it, but it's just so counterintuitive to, like, having your flippers up to let it come back into play. Um, no, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of videos out there uh, where... There's some people that are really good at the game, so I think you just have to play it enough to, just like anything, learning learning ramp shots or whatever, there would be, you'll start to see some of the predictability of it. Back to like Neo stuff. Like I was just over there on Saturday testing internet connections because we are trying to stream some of his games instead of just doing local recordings. And I'm still fighting with that. Anyway, um, like he he has every Gen 2 Zachariah game. Ugh. And the last one that he needed was Black Belt, which he just got like a month ago. So, like, he's got, like, collector condition, like, spooky. He's got... I just knocked in the drain. Mm. Um, 
Like his Spooky's in really good condition. Was Robot is. It's got Zancor, which is now my favorite Zacharia game after playing it in person. Um, some of it's it's nice that Magic Pixel uh, made digital versions of all the games, and I'm very appreciative of it. But it's wait, it's it's hard to get a then. oh my turn. It's hard to get a feel with the depth of a digital game. Yes. Lucky. And when you could, when you play the game in person, you, you appreciate it a little bit more. Like I had no idea on Zancor there was a jump ramp that pops up once you qualify it. Like I didn't even know because I never qualified it in the it's, digital game. It's like the early version of uh, what No Good Gophers or. Um, no, it's it's more reminiscent to um, Goldeneye. Goldeneye, where yeah. it pops up out of the playfield. Yeah. Well, go no good gophers is what pops up out of the playfield too. <laughs> Steven, goes down it goes down. We're enjoying ourselves. This is fun, and we're both sober. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. What did you say? You said what? Uh. I'm trying to cut back on my carbs and salt. On like your what? Carbs and salt. All your carbs and salt? Well, yeah. Talking about health now? <laughs> well, I'm not drinking. Oh. Well, I'm eating more pizza than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where the heck is uh <laughs> what sober orbiter one? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we got multi ball a couple of times. <laughs> no, you know what, the, the worst part about the pizza I've been eating. And this, this is actually where I do feel a little shame. It's been chain pizza. And we have so many phenomenal, like, mom and pop uh, pizzas around us. Yeah? I don't know. I don't mind chains. Uh, you're trying to tell me you'd rather have... Domino's? Yes. No, stop. Go to your room. <laughs> Go to your room. Domino's is great. I don't know what you're talking about. Blech. It's all right. I don't know. It's, it's what you grow up with, I guess. I like it. Why? Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Like, all those chain pizzas, a lot of them are in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Emoto's been here for longer than two solid minutes. Oh, what this toes? Thank Pete. you for putting the Rocky or Coco Emoto. Uh, Pizza Hut, too. That's... It, they've... Pizza, it's gotten really good. No. Yes. Just go. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. We had, so I had pizza because Sue wanted it. Like, Sue, when did we get Pizza Hut? Was that like two months ago? For the first time, and I'm not joking, I haven't had Pizza Hut in years. It's gotten really good. And it was the worst pizza I've had, oh, and I can't remember come on. how long. Come on. And I even got stuffed crust. Oh, well, I don't know. You don't need to get stuffed crust, but... If you get pizza, I guess you do. Uh, I don't know. Lindsay used to always get it for like her um, youth group things, and I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. And it was like super cheap. See, that's that's the one thing. Like the chains, you can't beat the pricing of the chain pizzas. You can't. Okay, I'll give you that. The prices are better. The price, but the you quality. get what you pay for. I'd rather spend twenty dollars on a good. Local establishment pizza I, I than know. pizza. Hut. You're telling me that yes, the, the yes, food scientists that work at Domino's are better than than whoever at this local pizza are, place. The scientists are better? No, they just load up the MSG. <laughs> and then they that's, go. That's and, where all the flavor is. And they go, this pizza is loaded with MSG and it's seven dollars. <laughs> that's. Why do you think it tastes so good? There's no evidence that there's MSG in there. Nah, there's MSG in everything. If it doesn't say MSG, if it says no MSG, there isn't. But if so, they don't state it, it's loaded. So guaranteed. So anything that tastes good, MSG for sure. 
<laughs> well, that's all MSG is is a flavor enhancer. Yeah. Oh, it's like salt. Well, it's it's a salt, but yeah. it, it it accentuates flavors. That's why they use it. It makes it taste better. Like your taste buds are like um an overdrive with it. That's why you're like, oh, this is so good. Oh yeah, I do. Seeing seeing K, I I remember Pizza Hut. When I was a kid, you remember when you could go in there and get beer, and there was like a. I think you still can. can. I they've changed it so much. Well, I, breadsticks used to. Be as really a kid, good. I remember getting it and playing Neo Geo, which was like the main reason I wanted to go there. Like my. The best memories I have of Pizza Hut is playing Neo Geo. Oh, CeCe's Buffet. Uh, that, that, CeCe's that's is all right. cheap. See, I've been to a CeCe's a few times. That, that's a really cheap pizza. We got Pizza Ranch around these parts. Pizza Ranch is good. I like it. It's, it's again, it's like, it's much like a CeCe's. Yeah. Where's the closest Pizza Ranch? Uh, Waukesha. Oh, okay. So it's not that close. No, it's like half an hour from here. All right, we gotta arc it. Skeet ninety one says Pizza Ranch chicken is awesome. Oh, Pizza Ranch chicken is pretty good. It's yeah. I think more people like the chicken than they like the pizza there. So, but it is kind of neat to put I, mashed potatoes on your pizza. I think Pizza Ranch is better than CC's. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. Um, now let's talk gas station pizza. Uh, what? Yeah. What do you think's better? Quick Trip Pizza or Casey's? Um, Casey's is garbage. Well, Casey's, there's a Casey's one block down the street, I know. David. I like their, they have good breakfast pizza, but I, I don't care for their normal pizza. So, there you go. Oh. Emoto says QT Pizza. QT? Oh, Quick Trip. Quick trip and uh, is that? Well, I think in a, so quick in a quick trip in Iowa is it's quick star. Quick star. I'm just killing these multi balls. Look at me. Yeah, I loaded it up for Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> ah, I lost one. I botched it. <laughs> So I know last week Dave finally had. Yeah, what's his toes? Rocky's Pizza for Casey's. <laughs> Dave finally had Rocky Rococo's on stream last week. And he said it was the best chain pizza ever had in his life. Uh. <laughs> It was pretty good. Of course it was. It's got amazing sausage. And I'm not even a sausage eater. Yeah. I'm more of a pepperoni guy. Yeah. So, here's a fun story that maybe most people don't know. Is Lindsay and I actually got married at a pizza place. Steve's Pizza in Austin, Minnesota. Um, so, we went with... Um, Come on. Three of our other pastor friends, and we got some pizza, and we just signed the papers at the pizza place. <laughs> so. Whoa. I know, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So we just kind of separated the uh, um, paper signing to the ceremony part. So we did, did a family thing later. Ugh. Not the yeah, not the spam museum, uh, <laughs> which is it's it's actually just across the street from uh, Steve's Pizza. So if you're ever going down I ninety, um, there's a tiny town in the middle, like uh, almost my fault. smack dab in the middle, uh, south 
south central of Minnesota, of Minnesota called Austin, and it is where the Hormel headquarters is, as well as the Spam Museum. It's kind of neat to go and see it. Well, if people don't know, before Dave came here to work at his current, well, two jobs, right? <laughs> he worked as a engineer for Hormel. Right. So what, do you want to tell him about your actual family wedding with the pizza deal that you had? Huh? Oh, well, yeah. So the, you mean the pizza? With pinball? Oh, yeah. So we, we, so the ceremony part was actually in Beloit, Wisconsin, and we did it at her, it's kind of, well, family farm, really. <laughs> so I brought four, four pinball machines. We had a bounce house and like a bunch of yard games and it was all like all outdoors and um, I don't know. And, oh, and we had a, a brick oven pizza trailer. Was See, there. So. this was wedding. <laughs> this is what I wish my wedding would have been. It would have been so much cheaper. I'd be like, and hey, we got a bounce house. <laughs> right. So when we when we were renting the tent and everything, it was like tables, tent. Okay, it's like. <gasps> Bounce house! <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> now, I would have been afraid to go in the bounce house and, you know, blow my knee out. <laughs> Being an old man. Oh, I, I don't think, I only got to go in it once when we set it up. Otherwise, it was just overrun with kids and... Yeah, you're going to need to push the kids out of the way and be like, right. hey, it's my wedding, get out of here. <laughs> right. When you get married, you can push people out of your way and right. about those. No, honestly, I it would have been more fun to be a guest. Oh, it would have been a blast. Than, uh, you know, because you have to, like, talk to everybody and don't get too drunk kind of thing. I was actually at a wedding that was, like, at a banquet hall, and they specifically requested, ba like, bar food. So it was, like... A pizza buffet with wings and breadsticks oh. and like, I'm trying to think what else they had. But I was like, this is the best wedding ever. It's all the food I love. <laughs> yep, pizza pinball weddings. Crazy. Ah. I'm getting better at just as I say it, I drain. Josh and Casey Sue. <clears throat> Yes, what's his toes? You get it. Just screw that dried chicken and overcooked green beans. That's right. Oh, uh, yeah. And then everyone's always like, oh, yeah, your wedding food was great. Just kidding, it sucked. No. I'm sure, you pay a pretty penny for all that, too. No, they had wings and breadsticks and other stuff, too. Uh. It was not just pizza. Yes, they did. I was the best man. I remember it. It was delicious. Uh, Belky from Meeples is my wife, if everyone is wondering. She was there and clearly has a bad memory. No, mine is perfect. Ugh. No, it was not open bar. They had pitchers of beer, though, I believe. Just pic pictures? Yeah. <laughs> Pic <laughs> Pictures. I just said pictures of beer. You can look at them. Yeah. <laughs> would you like a picture of me? <laughs> that would be a mean, an awesome joke. Like, what the heck is this? It's a, a picture, picture of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't save it.
That was brutal. <sighs> Melbourne Silverball, thank you so much for the follow. It is greatly appreciated. Oh, man. Look at that. You win with Orbiter 1 Best Spinner Rip. That is for certain. No! <laughs> it is pretty cool when you actually get it. My favorite thing is when the ball whips around this way and then hits the drop target bank. Oh, That's like the yeah, most satisfying cool. thing in the game. Maybe that's why they call it Orbiter. Yes. Is it... <laughs> Orbits the reverse backwards <laughs> orbit. It's nothing but orbits. Yes. Man. It's like a trick shot. You gotta let it go behind the flipper and hit it with the other one to get to the back. Well, and you get you when you go all the way around, it spots two drop targets too. So. You want to answer Jeremy's question or statement? Uh. The upper and lower insert text. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, yes. So there's, there's not a whole lot of inserts on the game, ah. Jeremy. So the, the lower one, it just says um, shoot again and extra ball and then it has um some play field multipliers above that that are they'll light up when you hit the drop targets yes and so he's got extra ball lit but in order to get extra ball right now he has to go through no! the, down the drain yeah he would have to go through the spinner and hit a stand-up target on the back in order to get to cash in that extra ball. So it's kind of a neat shot. But yeah, they're printed. All the inserts are printed on the thermoformed moon uh, landscape. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of insert lights on this. Um, so most of the lighting, there's actually a big uh, fluorescent tube. Um, underneath this that backlights it. Yep, that backlights the the bottom of it. So I mean when if when you first look at the game if you don't realize that it's a like a bathtub shape like you look at this and you go what what is this? Like how do they do this? How's the ball reacting in such a weird way? The top two red and yellow, the yellow is the extra ball and the red is the special. Oh yeah, you probably and, can't read it, huh? Right. And so the Yeah. What I was talking about was, so it, there is a, um, see how the lights are like kind of telling you to, to go up that way where it's like a controlled um, light that, anyway, so that's how you cash in the special and extra ball is you got to hit that. That's why that spinner shot is so critical. So it's on the left, kind of the tip of your flipper to get that spinner shot when you have it lit. So. Hundredth game special. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, right. We played a hundred games. <laughs> this this game has some weird stuff to it. So it just knocked the knocker for the hundredth game special. What's his toe says this Blackwater 100? Are there any other pins that have molded play fields? Uh, Mystery Castle is kind of funky. Elvin G. Uh, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, that one. 
Well, yeah, I would say, yeah, you talk about, yeah, Blackwater 100 is probably the, the, yeah, that's another really crazy, multi-level, weird game. Um, yeah, Blackwater 100 puts this to shame. This is as basic as it gets. Yeah, that one's, I mean, it's kind of all over the, so it, that one starts out with a multi-ball, and then you, you quickly lose it, oh, and it, I've played one a couple of times, but I don't know. To me, the jeez, I haven't hit anything yet. To me, the 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 multi ball doesn't last very long, and then you're you're trying to navigate through all the different levels. And I guess I haven't played enough to really give it a, a solid opinion, but. It's it certainly is neat and weird. <clears throat> there we go. And if you've never played this game, the shooter rod is like way down on the cabinet. It's so strange. It's, yeah, because the the play field is so deep. Yeah. So they, there's there's like a an inclined um, ramp to to shoot the ball. On. That's why the ball kind of pops out at the top of the play field. No, right in the drain. How many people we got? Well, we can do our t-shirt giveaway if you want. You have the question ready? Right? Good enough one, I guess. All right, after this game, we'll do the uh, t-shirt trivia giveaway. We haven't done one in a little while. I think we had a canceled stream, and then we had the last one at your house. And Yeah, we forgot to do it last week. I remembered after we, like the next day, I was like, oh, we didn't do a t-shirt deal. Yeah, well, I didn't bring any to show, so, oh well. So yeah, we haven't done one in like three weeks. <clears throat> Another um, interesting thing, if you look at the back glass and you look at the art style, look at the artwork on Odyssey 2 video games. It is identical. So I don't know which one came first. I think... Is it, what year did this come out? 81? Um, no, it was uh, 82. 82? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure if this came out before Magnavox Odyssey 2, but I mean, it is a complete ripoff. You didn't hit nothing. down the drain. Shoot pinball again. Center drains are harder to get on this. It's more of a. Just kidding. <laughs> oh well. Uh, this is ball three, right? Alright, so after I drain, then we will do the t shirt giveaway. You just have to talk about it and then it happens, right, Steven? <clears throat> okay, so what we will do is we will say the question. Dave is also typing the question. Oh, I haven't typed it. 
<laughs> Dave's going to type the question now. <laughs> uh, whoever gets it right, we will send you a T-shirt. Just got to send us your uh, name and address, and then we'll send you a shirt. Okay. So. Right. <laughs> I'll take it quick. <laughs> Um, I'll show a shirt while he's typing. It's just white on black logo. Get it? Almost. Yep. The suspense. Okay. What is the highest selling what is the highest selling game from the designer of this game? Ooh. Tricky. So you need to know the designer and you need to know what his highest selling game was. Oh, did you tell him that we have we have XL and 2XL no, sizes? So I have, I have XL and 2XL sizes left. And we need, yeah, we're going to have to place another order for the other sizes soon. Yeah. Did he exclusively only make games for Stern? I think he did, right? As far as being a designer? Um... No, he, he worked for other companies. So the, the game the game that it, uh, this is is not a Stern game. Nope, not Striker Extreme. He made some really popular ones. Is he even alive? I'm not sure. Some of these know. guys you don't hear too much about. Not Quicksilver. Yes, he did make Quicksilver. Yes, it is Pinbot. Dude, you rock it. Oh, wait. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, it is not Pinbot. That was... <laughs> Pinbot was made by... Barry Ausler. What? No, it says right on IMPD. I'm sorry. It's a... Uh, Sync 91. But it says right on IMPD. IMPD. Pinbot. 12, just over 12,000 units. Designer, Joe Jews Jr. Yeah, he did mechanics for Pinbot. That's what I thought. Doesn't say mechanics. I thought design credit went completely to Barry Ellsworth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looking it up. <laughs> David? Hmm. Well... It, it it does when you go into it it says Joe Juice or uh, does say mechanics by hmm well hmm well we're gonna have to figure out um, the the right David, answer then David, David, <laughs> right? David. <laughs> that's what I get for for coming up with the the trivia question uh, on the fly. So we'll figure out the right one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Alsler did do Pinbot, but Joe Jews was on mechanics for it. So yes, it does say it until you click on click on the hyperlink to it. I think as far as designing goes, he was only stern. Well, the one I was looking for was Pinbot, so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll just go with uh, Sync91. Um, so if you want to send me a message on Pinside will work. Um, <laughs> if you send it to Brennan98 on Pinside, uh, let me know your name and address. And I have uh, XL and 2XL, um, and I can get that sent out to you tomorrow. So <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> Yep, but we're going with it. Albany Pinhead. <laughs> so. Player, player.
Because that's what I had in my head for the, the right answer. So. David, 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 David. Hey. Now I'm going to cross check you. Uh. Hey, don't make me feel bad. <laughs> Giving away free shirts here. It's not like anybody's paid anything for them. We pride ourselves on correct information. Well, IMPD has got the wrong hyperlinks then, so. Go only go off of what's written. <laughs> now I'm curious to what what is what is the highest then? Well, it's gonna be a stern game. Well, he didn't, well, he didn't he make did. that many. He, he, did, for, he did Stargazer. Both for low selling. So, the next highest one... Um, Come on. That's the one thing about this game. If the ball goes lightning. behind behind the flipper, put one up, because it's going to go lightning. right in the drain. Lightning was uh, the highest stern one that he designed. Lightning? Yeah. Ooh, man, almost a clean sweep. No, there's, yeah, there's more, more lightnings than catacomb. No, oh, I knocked it in. Hmm. I would rather play catacomb. Oh, then light, I, I owned a lightning for a very brief time. It's, it looks cool. But it does. kind of, you, you spend a lot of time on the lower play field and I feel like the upper play field was just, it's more, kind of more luck to stay up there. That and like the, the screen or the display in the play field is kind of weird. It's got some like weird mode to it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Is that the first game with digital display? When did Medusa come out? Um, 81. I'm trying to think what other games had that. Well, so in Medusa, the play field? Yeah, Lightning Medusa from the line. Um, Spirit had it. Yeah, Spirit had it. Right? And that was 80, I thought. Ugh. Yeah, so yeah, Sharpshooter was mentioned, but we know it was it was Roger Sharp and and uh, with him, so yeah, it yeah, because little... as far as I remember, Roger Sharp's only full credited game that he designed on his own is Cyclops, I believe, yep. right? Yeah. Everything else he is a co-designer. Yeah. Yeah, and even Catacomb, like, if you read some of the threads on that, like, the, the production numbers don't make sense. There's a lot of discrepancy on um, how many were actually made. So, nobody really, really knows the numbers. Down the drain. <clears throat> This 
pretty neat. Um, I ended up getting a new playfield for uh, Catacomb. So, someday, I'll work on it. I Certainly don't think neat the original game. play field that bad. No, but someone did some not so great touch ups and then put mylar all over it. Mm -hmm. And so if I go to remove it, there's always that risk and of you're gonna peel up a lot more art than you want to when you're removing a, the a touch ups that come faster. Oh yeah, I guarantee you they will. So I guess it's it's more I got it because it was available and you know <laughs> I suppose I can decide not to use it but oh could you imagine this game was actually in a tournament people would be furious oh I mean like I said is it fun it's it's different I enjoy it for what it is but I'm not gonna go out of my way to go buy one. Well, it didn't fall in my lap like Dave here. Right. Well, and that's just it. Like, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're typically pretty expensive, and they're and, and they're hard to find. So, um, yeah, exactly what this tells. Like, you can't. I mean, this is a novelty game. I mean, this is... It is what it is. It's... A... How to word it? A, um... For trying something different, <laughs> this is as different as you're gonna get. Yeah. Well, and it... Like we said, it was like the last... I'm sorry. The last thing that the Stern Electronics put out, and they're trying something to be different. Who knows? It'd be interesting to hear the <laughs> the history on it and how it came Stephen about. Goes, it's different. It's fun for what it is. For what it is, me and Rob Zombie. I'm not going on the way to buy one. This is where I screwed up. <laughs> mm. Ugh. You know, the, the funny thing is, I know two people that have this game, obviously Dave being one of them, and Neo has one as well. Yeah. Which is strange. I think it's 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 pretty cool. Like like I said, I the first time I ever played it was at Flame Brook and um they had have fifty games at um Wait, maybe it's it's either 30 or 50. I can't remember. It's a lot. And so when they have, you know, something really unique like this there, I, I always like to, when I'm going to locations, I always appreciate the location that has a variety of stuff. And, um, you know have something like like this there is really neat you don't you don't see it out in uh, on location almost almost never I'm pretty sure Terry at Pinball Life has one maybe Tim, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where I exactly played it the first time. I, I want to say it was Replay FX, but I can't remember for certain. Did I count? Did you hit something? No, I hit something. 
You hit one switch. Ah, well, thank you, Tim. Nice. Thank you for stopping in and dropping some bits. Greatly appreciated, as always. I mean... The thing that I think is... Ingenuitive... Is... Like, the, the pop bumpers. I think... I mean... Like I said before, I had no idea that they were a spinning rubbery foam deal. I thought they were like some sort of pulsing magnet thing that made the ball act the way it did. Mm -hmm. And when Dave got it and was explaining how it worked, I was like, oh, I had no idea that's even what that was. Yeah, it kind of looks like they're just sitting still, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely moving. They're pretty, they're moving really fast, actually. Yeah, they're moving. Well, that's why I didn't know they spun, because you can't tell they're spinning. Yep. That sound would be like a drain sound, but it was probably something else good. One for... Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, the old behind the flipper drain. <laughs> Spinning magnets. <laughs> Spinning magnets, yes. <clears throat> And I did the same thing you did. Well, and I, there's there's a few games out there. Well, we just we played Houdini not long ago that has three magnets in the center of the play field that kind of throws the ball every which way. Weird things like that. Adam's family did something... Has three. All the magnets, yeah. Um, Last Action Hero has three magnets. Dialed in's got magnets. Yeah, so it's it really does, kind of does a similar effect. But I'm gonna do maybe a couple more and then we'll. Yeah, let's call play it. two more and we'll. I mean, I don't think we're gonna show anything else that's gonna be <laughs> anything we haven't seen already. All right. I mean, I'll say, if you've never played this game, definitely play it. Just to see how insane it is. Yeah, that's why I think it's it's a... I think it's a really good game to have on location if you have a place that can have a, a significant number. Um, just, just to have something different that you don't see all the time. Like I was saying I, I appreciate the locations that have a variety you know have some modern stuff some early solid states EMs it's I like uh, I like when they have uh, balanced um, balanced games but I don't know it maybe it doesn't always make sense to operators they want to make money and New stuff probably makes more money than old. So, what's his toes ask about co-op? What about co-op? <laughs> co-op? For what? It's a joke. Oh. Yeah. There's internet connectivity on this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're doing code updates right now. <laughs> it's a space-aged game, you know? Ooh. 
trying to get a good spinner shot out of it. I do really, really enjoy the stern sound effects, though. Oh, there it is. Playfield game with an upper playfield. A double upper playfield? Uh, oh wait, try Sim level? Simpsons? No oh, wait, you can't play that. You, it's just a lock. New of Ed, thank you so much for the 500. Has that bits. ever been done? What? A double and a double? Yeah. Yeah, the pinball circus. <laughs> yeah. Is the whole whole playfield up there though? I can't remember. New event says they're glad Dave didn't get stabbed in the back alley bits. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. No, the guy was actually pretty nice. Oh, they're always nice till they stab you. Right. It's like, well, you're not getting the game, and I'm taking all your money, and uh, and your life, and your stab. <laughs> Like, thanks for the money. Stab. <laughs> and I'm stepping on your phone so you can't call my own. Oh. Dig it. Bummer. Stab. <laughs> ah. One day to wear my chain mail. Ah. Also, what we should bring up is the Facebook group, since you're doing a lot more restoration work right now, I'm posting it on the, the group. Page. Sure. Um, so yeah, if you haven't been following some of our Facebook posts, um, I'm currently working on a cabinet restoration for Stargazer. Um, just kind of posting updates with that. Uh, after this, we're gonna play around with some. Try to get a, a streaming setup for for me for so, Facebook Live. Yeah, for Facebook. So try to work on that, and then I got just to up the quality a little bit since we have the the, the gear to do it. And then um, ah no, knocked it in. I also set up uh, that. The Sonic Faces EM uh, that I'm going to go through. Asks, have we ever played Dark Var? I almost said Darkon. Varkon. I we both did yes. for sure at Galloping Ghost. That's, that's the um, stand up the one. one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I played it. Yeah, that's like the Shaker. I think they call them Shaker games. Blue or Goose Five says, "Dave, you ever get a Stargate?" Yeah, I have a Stargate. Right down around the corner, there's a Stargate. Yep. Yeah, I have two. What's his toes? That is exactly the very game. I have three, three Gottlieb System threes. Um, they are Stargate, Stargate Gladiators, and uh, Class of eighteen twelve. I am a fan of. I like. I like the Gottlieb System threes. I like some of them. <laughs> I think they're fun. I, I cut. Ooh, look at that. Lucky. Oh, no! Short lives. So Blue Goose 5 says so this is Matt and Mankato. Huh? Oh! Hey, Matt. How's it going? I need to. Actually, um, so I'll be in Minnesota. Uh. 
first weekend, so of November. Yeah, first weekend in November, I'm picking up Einstein, the second Golden Doodle, um, and so I'm planning to take a trip to New Ulm at that time. <laughs> New Ulm knows the the layout of Dave's basement. Down around the corner, take a left at the EM, pass the pile of parts, and you'll find the Gottliebs. <laughs> Quite shot. accurate action. Oh, no. no. dang it. You're playing with me. I know. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> playing awfully. Yeah, what what games did you sell recently? You sold Big Game and Split Second? Or is that is there anything else? And um, Lizard. Oh, and Lizard, yeah. So Dave does sell games. Yeah, it's a while I do. Oh, my goodness. We'll play one more game and then uh, we'll pull the plug on Orbiter 1. And as the arcade said, Orbiter, Orbiter 2 is probably better. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's there's lots of, there's quite a few collectors that are, have massive collections that are quite quiet about it. I've been to one in uh, Neo's League that I go there and he like he has just about every DMD game you could possibly imagine it's it was insane he easily had 80 pinball machines but I just I don't think he's as active on pin side and that so. yeah some people don't even list their collections and you go to their house and you're like uh Mm -hmm. All right, I don't want people knowing what I have. Yeah. Clearly. You go to someone's house and they have like 40 some games. Right? Well, you know, not not everybody. Like, I I made a friend in um, um, Omaha. I had a friend in Omaha that had over 100 machines. Um, most. I would say maybe like, I don't know, 70% or 60% were EMs. Um, but anyway, he built a whole pole barn just for his pinball machine. Heck yeah, I would do the same thing. So, but yeah, he, he said he's he's on pin side and he like, the only reason he goes on there is to buy for, games. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's, that's it. That's pretty much what I do. He'll read some stuff, but he like never posts. He only sends private messages, and that's pretty much it. He's like, he's like, yeah, I don't really care about the drama. I don't need to like. Ah, I knocked it in. Be involved. Uh, the guy in Omaha, New Ovid, uh, well, a lot of the, the guys that have large collections like that, um, that's, some of them are, are pretty meticulous about, you know, making sure they go through all the games, um, when they get them. And, and I would say, I try to do the same when, when I'm going through, a game I want to try to make sure everything's solid before I kind of move it into the lineup um, and then once it's all gone through the it's just minor things to if anything comes up
I was recently watching one of the uh, Marco tech streams. Mm, with Kyle. And, yep. And, and a moto who was just here. Yep. Which are really cool, by the way, if you haven't watched them. Um, yeah, they do a do, great job. Yeah, they do a really nice job. Um, Which we should have said when Amoto was here. Oops. <laughs> but but yeah. we're self-centered and only focus on Orbiter 1. <laughs> so anyway, I was watching that, and, and he, he brought up a good point as he was, um, I think he was, he was restoring some drop, drop targets. And he's like, yeah, you know, when you, when you go through a game, like, completely, and it's going to be in a home use setting, it's yeah. it's probably going to last for, you know, another 30, 40 years, you know, going through it to that extent, because it's just not going to see that much same, abuse, yeah, that much, the abuse that it did in an arcade, so... You gotta figure arcades, they're on, nah. you know, majority of the day, every day, getting played every day, um, basically until they get, until they broke, until they're broken, or they uh, stop making money, so... <laughs> talking to an operator today where they, you know, it's, it's as expensive as the games are today, it makes a lot of sense where they're doing things ah, like, I got cute. trying to keep them as nice as they can with like protectors and things like that. Because you figure like when, when it stops making money, it's still an ex expensive investment. So you want to be able to turn around and and sell it for, you know, close to what you got invested in. Thanks, Lead Sam. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, you know, having a large collection, which obviously Dave knows all about, you know, which Dave obviously is very capable of fixing nearly everything. Um, that's why he uh, has the job he has with American Pinball. You know, as opposed to someone like me, who's like, eh, I can adjust switches, and I can solder here and there, and then after that, I'm like, Dave, help. You know, I can't have an insane collection unless it's been, like, bulletproofed. Well, and that's... There's, there's all kinds of collectors, and I, I think that's... I've spoken to many of them where um, a big reason... One of the big reasons why ah, people in. buy new games is oh, that was last. yeah, is that you're getting all the modern stuff and um, you're kind of starting from you know a blank slate rather than picking up a project game and you know having to go through and bulletproof everything. Um, you know, it just takes a lot of skill set and if you don't do it all the time it can be daunting so well I think we'll pull the plug uh, I think we kind of exhausted what, <laughs> exhausted what Orbiter 1 actually is um, it if you haven't played one play it because it, it is that off the wall and crazy and takes a lot to get used to um, yeah, next time you're at a show, if there ever is a show. Yeah, if there's ever a show again. <laughs> we'll... uh, they, they show up from time to time. Pete Sandman says, bless your Orbiter One hearts. <laughs> you're quite welcome. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out, especially when there's so many other streamers now that do a better job than we do. We appreciate everyone who takes the time to hang out with us. It means a lot. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for the follows. Um, I know, right? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll raid uh, Fox City's Pinball. Tom Graff does a really good job. He's also a member of the Pinball Network like we are. Um, I 
<laughs> well, thank you, Lee, Lee Sandman. We try to talk about things that are not pinball, like pizza and stuff like that. <laughs> and and getting married. Fun and, you know, <laughs> keep it light. It's supposed but, to be fun. Yep. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it. See ya. Stop.